today. We, we truly appreciate your remarks, and uh, we appreciate your um, the camaraderie you express with those of us who operate in local government. I can assure you that the, um, the, the experiences you had in, 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 uh, in South Carolina are not unique in terms of that uh, bringing government closer to the people aspect. Um, I'll very quickly just say, on behalf of the Virginia Association of Planning District Commissions, we are very excited today that uh, this year we have formally um, brought a become the third agency or third organization to be participating in this important legislative day. Obviously, PDCs are a very important part of how we operate local government here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So on behalf of the entire association, I want to thank everyone associated with VACO and VML for including this as a three-way partnership. I hope it's a long and fruitful one for all of us. Uh, but perhaps more importantly, I am very honored today to introduce uh, Joan Waduska. Uh, she's a member of the Prince of the Fairfax uh, Falls Church <laughs> She's from Northern Virginia. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good thing. She's a member of the Falls Church. I'll introduce myself. She's a member of the Falls Church. <laughs> and, uh, and, is, and, more, and, and, and uh, also the vice chairman. I'm going to read it. She's the vice chairman of Governor McDonald's task force on local government mandate review. Joe, thank you for your service on the support committee. Uh, I apologize for, uh, you're, you're going to be mayor of Virginia Beach in a few minutes, so I keep going. Uh, so, uh, mayor of Virginia Beach here. So we're just looking forward to your Thank you so much. That's the best introduction I've ever done. This is like a school board member's dream. I have all the folks that hold the purse. And I have to tell you, on behalf of all the school board members that I represent all across the state, I am not here to ask for money today. <laughs> I may lose that job when I leave here, but for this moment, I'm with you. First and foremost, I want to re uh, recognize and thank my own city council member who's here, Lawrence Webb. Lawrence, where are you? Church, we have an amazing relationship between the school board and the city council. We work very collaboratively, transparently. A budget is probably the strength in our community of working together, not holding our cards. And I'm so proud to have that relationship with you. And I wish all of you that uh, you, you have that relationship as well. So I'm here today to talk about my favorite things, mandates from the state. Um, the la in the last probably 75 days, I've become known as the mandate mama up in General Assembly, or the woman who doesn't want more mandates on local government. And I want to explain to you how I've gleaned that nickname in the better part of just a few months. Thanks in large measure to the work that all of you have done, pushing on the General Assembly year after year after year, and saying that there can't be more unfunded or underfunded mandates coming from the General Assembly down to local government. The recent economic pressure that has been put on every single one of us accelerated that discussion. And last year, with the help of Senator Newman, our legislation was passed in the General Assembly to create a task force. I know. Many times you hear a task force, and that's, that's our collective way as local officials of putting something to study that's really hard and nasty, that we just don't want to have to deal with at that time. What Senator Newman did was really quite creative, and we really thank him for it, is that he appointed five elected officials here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And when elected officials get together, just as David noted, we get things done. And so in the course of 60 days, we came forward with our first interim report to the governor, making recommendations on what state mandates we view as unnecessary, outdated, costly, or burdensome. And we worked incredibly closely with VACO, VML, the Virginia School Boards Association, and the Virginia Association of Superintendents. And I'm incredibly thrilled that all four organizations endorsed the report after its submission. You should know that in the history of the Commonwealth of Virginia, there has been one mandate, one mandate, that has been eliminated through the mandate review process. One mandate. <coughs> Today, there are over 600 mandates on state and local government, on, on local government and city government. Of those, the better part of one-third apply to public education alone. 
So this is big business. It's very serious for us on the school boards. We're very concerned about it. So when everyone got together, we were able to identify three key projects and three key areas that the task force wanted to focus in on. We wanted to be bold, we wanted it to be significant, and we saw this as an opportunity for local officials to truly put a stake in the ground and change the culture in general assembly. And the three things that we said needed to be done, first and foremost, number one, there needed to be a mandate but there needed to be a moratorium on mandates. No new mandates on city and county. <laughs> Number two, we're used to delivering a bottom line. We have to make the hard decisions every day. And so we believed it was important that we were going to be able to define success and know whether or not we achieved it. And so we wanted to have bold, measurable goals. So we said that for the length of our task force, which goes until 2014, every single year, we aspire to have a 50% reduction in state mandates on local government. And we're going to measure and we're going to check in on that. And that is the recommendation we made to the governor and it is the recommendation that he has accepted. Number three. Hopefully that's good. Number three. We needed to change the mandates, as I called them, on mandates. Did you know that there are rules about how often you can review a mandate in General Assembly? I can't make this up. If you get a new mandate, a new shiny mandate, comes down on high, and it comes into city and county government, we can't review it for two years because it needs time to germinate <laughs> be, to be implemented, to be studied. Well, let me tell you, when I talked to your executive director from Vago and VML and your lobbyists, and I said, do you need two years to study whether or not a mandate costs you money and is a good idea? They looked at me like I had grown a second head. They said, Joan, we need about two seconds. We can tell you whether or not a mandate is a good idea or not. So number one, no, we don't need two years. And the second thing, did you know that after a mandate, a new mandate becomes a freshman in college, you can't review it for another four years. Four years. So uh, not a, an idea that's not so great in a six-year period could maybe get reviewed once. And that was totally unacceptable to the task, the governor's task force on local mandates. So he said those three things had to change. Number one, there needed to be a uh, moratorium on new mandates. Number two, there needed to be a 15% reduction year over year from now to 2014. And number three, we needed to change the rules on mandates. What we have put forward, what we recommended to the governor is now embodied in Senate Bill 679 and House Bill 1295. And we would ask for your continued help and support in moving both of those pieces of legislation. That's Senate Bill 679 and House Bill 1295. I would say two very significant things, and I know you have a lot on your agenda, so I don't want to consume too much time. Again, in the history of Virginia, there's only been one mandate that has been removed through the mandate review process. If the General Assembly acts, this would be the most significant endeavor that they have taken in the General Assembly to start rolling back mandates on local government. And if they do that, not only is it good for the taxpayers here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but it would position Virginia to be a leader in the nation as the most aggressive state in the country to redefine the state and local partnership to deliver services to citizens. And that is truly significant. So let me tell you a little bit about what's in our package. And these ideas came from you. And I am so deeply thankful for your suggestions. And I would say to you that our work is not over. We will continue to work for the next several years. We need more ideas. Those pesky little things that don't work, we need more and more and more of those ideas from you. But let me tell you what this first round, this interim package, is going to include. First and foremost, we're going to be eliminating UDAs.
We're going to be suggesting the elimination for the requirement for the secondary road projects. And we're going to be eliminating all the requests where Richmond had to look in on what was going on with red lights. We are going to eliminate the requirement that libraries annually report on internet use policies to the Commonwealth. We're going to eliminate the ability of circuit courts to unilaterally order the construction of a new courthouse by local government. the restrictions on the sale of surplus property from the state on local governments. And we're going to eliminate so many more other requirements. In education, most exciting for me from a school board perspective, three things. First, we're going to have a 15% reduction in paperwork. Paperwork is hurting public education in Virginia. People didn't get into the education business to spend time on paperwork. It got into the business of education to spend time with people. And the more time that they are spending on paperwork, the less time they have to help their kids. The second thing is that the report recommended unanimously the full repeal of the King's Dominion Law. And I'm sure you all know, the better part of three decades, the King's Dominion Law has prohibited local government you, along with your school board members, and local businesses and parents from deciding when to start school. Today, 77 of the 132 school divisions around the state have an exception from this broken old relic of the law. In fact, only Virginia and Michigan have such antiquated laws on the books. The commission felt that this was truly, as they put it, the definition of a burdensome, a costly, and an outdated mandate, and it needed to be repealed. And with your hope, with your help, we hope that we can achieve that. <laughs> Thirdly, on the education side, we found that there are a lot of barriers that make it difficult for us to retrain, retain, attract, and compensate great quality staff in your schools. I understand firsthand as a school board member how much of an investment that you make in public education. I understand what a significant challenge that that has been in these last several years. And what I am so proud to tell you is that the task force members working together, working with the governor, and now with your help working with the General Assembly, we feel confident that not only is this going to be a time, as we see it, to reclaim our schools, but it's going to be an opportunity for us all to reclaim our wallets and the ability to run our cities and our counties as we see fit and as we collectively have been elected by our citizens to do. So it's very exciting work. We ask for your support. We ask for your continued assistance. But most of all, we need your ongoing ideas. We need your suggestions. It is what you have submitted to us. 29% of counties in Virginia sent in recommendations. You gave us our, your ideas. Keep sending those ideas in, and let's hold the General Assembly accountable, and let's change the culture in the General Assembly. A mandate is no longer free in Virginia. A mandate is no longer free, and that's the bottom line for the task force. So thank you very much for having me.